Joining us now is Travis Bruffy, um, our newest offensive tackle and member of the Green Bay Packers. So, Travis, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for joining us this evening. Um, and we always like to ask all of our guests, um, what is it like to be a Green Bay Packer? Well, just first off, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's really a privilege to be here talking to you all and talking to all the fans out there. Um, I can just start by saying uh, it's just, I mean, honestly surreal. I don't think, I think like, as a kid, you grew up just uh, idolizing a couple organizations across sport, regardless that's football, baseball, soccer, you know, stick and puck, whatever y'all, whatever it is, there's certain logos that just have this different aura about it. And uh, the Green Bay Packers definitely, definitely one of those teams. And uh, to think that, you know, this kid who's, you know, the entire, on the other side of the country, never even been that far north is, is has a chance to make a name for himself in that great city of Green Bay for such a legendary team. I don't think there's a better place or a better opportunity for anyone in my position. I'm just hoping to make it last as long as possible. So, Travis, you sound like uh, you're already uh, you're already on board, man. You sound like Wags and I when we talk about the team. So we love it. Um, oh, so, gosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so question for you then. I mean, you, you mentioned that. Um, you had an opportunity probably to sign with an awful lot of teams after the draft. Um, what made you want to come to Green Bay? Were there other teams in the running? Um, you know, just kind of curious of what your mentality was or what made you want to land in Green Bay as a, as a position piece here. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, the, there, there's options at any different, you know, any different paths you take, there's going to be options in life. And I think that you really got to prioritize what you want out of certain things and, what I wanted to be a part of was something bigger than myself, something bigger where, you know, it's, I'm not just another undrafted free agent. that's going to roll through the cracks. I wanted to look, look for one, uh, an organization that a culture that meant something. And like I said earlier in my introduction, that there's no better place, you know, no better culture than in than Green Bay. Um, plus, I mean, you watch Monday night games or Sunday night games, the nationally televised games, you'd see Lambeau field going crazy. Um, and just some of the stadiums I had to play in, in college, I understood how much of a home field advantage really meant to some teams. And uh, to be a part of the best fan base, um, you know, a, a fan base that literally owns a team, I, there's no other place like it in sport. So uh, you look at the culture, look at the people that I know that have played for them, uh, for, for us now, and they have nothing but great things to say about it. There's a standard of excellence around the program. Um, just the fans love it. They're a nationwide team. Like I said, no better place to be. I'm super honored to be a part of it. That's fantastic. I, I mean, we agree, of course. Um, can you take us behind the scenes a little bit on what the whole process was uh, leading up to um, selecting the Packers as the team that you were going to sign with as an undrafted free agent? Because I know you've only gone through this once. But I have to imagine that, you know, your agent and folks that you were talking to must have been talking about how different this process probably was compared to in, in most years. Right. Um, I mean, it's super quick. Uh, like I said, literally in, in a matter of a couple minutes, um, you feel six or seven different phone calls and the decisions made within five minutes after that. So, uh, you know, I watched every pick. Um, I mean, obviously, I knew I wasn't going to go in the first round, but you still watch it. You, you sit on your couch, the same spot, because I'm pretty superstitious. Um, on the same spot for three days, X amount of hours, uh, just sitting there, uh, just just trying to keep my nerves down, being like, oh, what? I, I, I blocked that. Trying not to get caught up in all that. But, um, you know, people make decisions and all that stuff. And um, I'm just fortunate enough that at the end of the day, I have the decision to be in the best place for me. And I made that decision. And uh, yeah, it is, it is very different, especially because of this year, the way things worked out. I didn't have to get a chance to have a pro day. Um, I didn't get invited to any bowl games or didn't get a combine invite. It was just all of what the conversations I had with coaches and the film that I put out my senior year and, and years before. And uh, very fortunate. There were people that believed in me just from the, that tape. And uh, I did everything I could in my power to make sure I had an opportunity. I'm very fortunate that I have it now. And did you I have um, close contact with the Packers? Now, did you think that that might be an option as, the, as it was unfolding, uh, you know, leading up to it? Had you been talking with the coaching staff, the front office, or was it a bit of a surprise when they called? You know, just curious uh, where that was on your part. Uh, I mean, I, I've been in contact with them um, just leading up to, like, around – I guess around the first uh, about a week or two before the draft, I talked to them a pretty pretty fair amount. 
And then the relationship really started building the week of draft, draft week, where you just kind of, I locked in with a couple coaches and got in good contact with them, started talking schematics, things like that. So um, it was really great. They were actually the first team, I believe, that reached out to my high school and kind of got some past intel on me, which like meant the world to me. I honestly didn't think I'd get a shot playing at this level um, until really late in the process. I was just, you know, going out there, giving it everything I got, treating every game like it could be my last um, at Tech. And then I started, you know, hearing about my high school coach texting me, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, the Green, Green Bay just asked for this questionnaire about you or something from them. And I was like, from then on, I just said, this is what I'm doing. Everything I got, prioritized, started looking at training facilities, things like that. And, um, you know, like I said, first team to reach out, last place I'm going. I'm very happy for it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know how well you've got to know some of your new teammates, but we were just – uh, really, it was very clear how much uh, the Packers front office puts an emphasis on some of the intangibles uh, that uh, you and, and some of those uh, guys are bringing. Can you talk a little bit about what leadership means to you and what some of the other intangibles um, that you might be bringing to the organization? Right. Um, well, I can tell you, I mean, just I don't mean to sound philosophical or anything. I think leadership in a sense, um, is a buzzword, and it's overused, and it's, it's preached a lot. Um, no one really teaches you how to lead because not enough people learn how to lead through being a follower first. Um, there's no good leader that's ever come out of anything, no successful leader that's not followed a, good, a better leader than themselves at one point. So um, leadership to me, and I, I mean, I've been in different leadership roles throughout my life in, in different facets, um, on and off the field, and the best thing that I've learned through it is that early on in the process of whatever you know, I was embarking on to sit there and realize that there are people in front of you, uh, whether it be on the depth chart, whether it be executives at a, a, um, a company or people that work on the staff, follow their footsteps because they're where you want to be and then learn from that and then use your own God-given ability uh, to interpret situations, to talk to people, to build off of the things you liked about their leadership style. But like I said, you can't be a leader. You can't be a leader unless you were once a follower. And you have to follow the right leaders to then be a good leader yourself. So it means a lot to me. Um, I think that some of the issues that we've ran in in past teams I've been a part of is that everyone wanted to be a leader and not everyone was a good leader. And no one, there was too many leaders that no one knew who to follow. Who to follow. Um, and uh, like I said, leadership's over-preached and it's not taught enough to, to then take a step back and know who to follow, learn uh, why they're good leaders, why they're good at what they do. Um, and that's just something I think that a lot more people need to do. And I, like I said, as an undrafted rookie, I have no choice but to follow. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to come in, and I'm very fortunate in this position to be part of in the brief amount of interaction I have with my, my new teammates. They're all great people. They are veterans in the offensive line, the best offensive line in the country that I get to learn from, that I get to, to sit there and watch them work. Uh, I'll be following them. I'll probably annoy them uh, just how much I follow them. But that's not, that's not my problem. I'm just here to, to make a team and, and fill a role. And if they can be as annoyed as possible with that, they want with me. But uh, uh, like I said, I'm just trying to follow and, and then hopefully be a leader myself one day. Yeah. Hey, so Travis, I really appreciate that. And uh, there's no doubt the, a great number of veteran players on this Packer offensive line across the board. Uh, you, you touched on a, a very briefly that you've had a little bit of contact with them. Have you had much a conversation with David Bakhtiari? I mean, one of the premier left tackles in all of football. And I imagine the guy that you're really going to want to be uh, keeping an eye out for. Well, absolutely. I haven't talked to him. Um, I don't think I mean, he probably doesn't know who I am. Um, but I promise you, like, like you just spoke on, he is the, the, the pinnacle of the position. Uh, he is – um, you know, done, done great things, uh, not for the Packers, for the position, just really redefining what it means to be a left tackle in the league. Uh, I'm going to be as, not as much if, you know, David willing to let me listen and, and uh, learn from as much as possible. That's something I plan on doing. Uh, he has a very unique way of, of playing the game, and I think that's what makes him so great. Uh, I've actually studied him for, I guess, years before I even knew I was going to be playing in the, football, in the National Football League. Uh, before I even had the chance to probably shake hands with them, they, you know, I just, you know, very, really, really, uh, you know, like I said, the pinnacle of the position and really fortunate to get a chance to learn from them. Yeah, and I was going to ask too, um, what's been going on with some of the OTAs and what, what has that been like? I mean, you're trying to get everything installed and, and uh, bring everyone up to speed. So um, 
can you walk us through kind of what the coaches have been doing to keep you guys engaged and um, and try to bring you along without obviously being there live in person and getting those reps? Right, and it's just going through a playbook and learning that playbook and understanding. Well, first off, you install the the culture and the standard of the team as best you can through um, through an iPad, and then after that, you install your playbook. And it's, it's polar opposite from any offense I've ever ran before. I've never taken a snap out of a three-point stance, for instance. Uh, never used a fullback in any offense. Uh, so you can imagine I've never ran, you know, power eye, nothing like that, which is the backbone of the Green Bay Packer offense. So OTA is essentially my, my goal was to know it well enough to when I get called on, I don't embarrass myself in front of guys getting paid a lot more money than I am. <laughs> so uh, I did that. Uh, I, you know, I think I did that hopefully well enough to, you know, have a, at least be on good standing coming to training camp. But, you know, that, that didn't stop there at OTAs. Uh, I'm still setting the playbook every day, just trying to make sure that when it's time to go live, my mind's not getting ahead of my feet. I'm able to just move as fast as possible and, and play the game that I love. And do you know if the, the team is, from a role perspective, are you looking right tackle? I know you played an awful lot of left tackle in college uh, you know what does that look like or is that something you're still feeling out with the organization because I know the Packers really pride themselves on having uh, offensive linemen that can play multiple positions so I was kind of curious uh, what your role is looking like right now right um, you know I think I think right now I was told that we're focusing most on the tackles left and right swing tackle okay. position I'm not in a position to be picky at all um, like I said I don't have a preference I want to fill whatever role needed. I'll, I'll tell him I'd punt if I had to. Um, I'll do whatever I got to do uh, to just, you know, help the team out as much as possible. But I'm trying to learn all five positions of the offensive line just in case something happened because you really never know. Um, you know, just uh, have a little baseline understanding of the center calls and, and how I could possibly, you know, learn from Corey if I got a chance to have a conversation with him and just be conversational at all five positions um, just in case something happens. But right now it's looking mostly like a swing tackle. Um, or whatever role that may be. So I think you just touched on a couple of the things that would answer this question, but a lot of the guys that we found that come in and are battling to make the roster, they have a very defined or clear plan or blueprint for what they're trying to do. Uh, what would you say your plan is for success uh, in year one? Oh, wow. I would love to hear the answers that you got to that question because I don't think there might be a tougher question to ask someone in my position. But um, I would say I think a lot of people, um, you come from, and obviously everyone that's at this position gets the got, got accolades at the previous level in college. They were probably, you know, had a guaranteed spot or at some point in their life they had job security. And it's easy to kind of understand or let that become the standard that you're accepting. And uh, like I said, my, my plan going into training camp is to find the role and excel at it. Whatever role that might be, um, I want to, I don't, I mean, building the, the number, whatever, my number on my jersey, building the name on the back of my, my jersey, that has time. But right now, my priority is to fill the role the Packers assigned to me and to excel at it to the best of my ability. Um, and not lose focus of that, not lose focus of if I get beaten a pass rush rep by, you know, an eight-year veteran. Uh, I'm not kicking, kicking rock and get down on myself. I understand um, that, you know, there's many different snaps that you're going to have every day um, to keep your head up, to progress every single day, to learn from the people that are ahead of you, and to, again, understand that role, excel at it, and never be complacent with that role either, and to always try to be pushing it, pushing it, pushing it to get to where you want to be. Now, are there other players, you mentioned Bakhtiari, uh, you know, growing up a little bit, watching him. Are there other players you modeled your game after or looked up to uh, just as a player? You know, I think for, for some Packer fans, uh, training camp is going to be some of the first times they've seen you play uh, the, the game of football. So kind of curious if there's guys you've modeled your game after. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, I wouldn't say I've modeled my game off of the uh, Bakhtiari because I would be insulting him but uh, I definitely have tried to learn from him as much as possible um, you know Lane Taylor another Texas boy uh, got yeah. to watch him play a little bit in college you know big bulldog you know the physical he brings to the game I, I watched him on film of course um, in high school my freshman year I was a kicker I remember the very I got like my freshman team so I watched a little bit of Mason Crosby kick a little bit <laughs> uh, you know, I guess I might have modeled a little uh, right-footed stroke from or something like that. But, you know, honestly, 
uh, there's so many people out there across so many different teams that uh, you watch and you're like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. He has that great technique or he can move like that. Or, and he he's crazy. He gets in that position. It's, it's, it's insane. And now it's my chance to do it. So I've pulled as much, much knowledge as I can off of how much tape I've watched. And uh, at this point, hopefully people are modeling their game after me one day. So I, I don't mean to make light of this, but I'm, I, of course I'm not, forgive me, but um, we not, we want nothing to happen to Mason Crosby, but could you still kick if, if, if we're called upon because emergency kicker is always a, another way to potentially make a roster, right? I mean, listen, I, I will buy you all dinner if I kick a field goal. And... <laughs> What, what a story that would be, though. I mean, uh, offensive tackle comes in as emergency kicker. Yes, y'all would have the breaking news story. Y'all would have the, you know, the, the generational headlines that y'all did. Y'all called it. But, um, you know, if that, if, yeah, if it came to that, uh, you know, it's been a real snafu. I think, I think I'm saying that saying right. But it is. it would really uh, be something if that happened. And, you know, so coming from Texas – you've probably played in an awful lot of hot games before and hot practices. Uh, I, I can't even imagine what's the coldest you played in before, because I don't know if you've heard, but Lambo gets a little bit chilly uh, come December and January. And we're expecting y'all to be playing deep into January again this year. Right. Uh, well, I've been in some uh, cold games and never played in the snow, um, but Kansas state in my junior year, actually I played in two, what would be classified as, you know, very cold games, single digit, um, and yeah, single digit games, um, both of which I've lost. So I haven't won in the cold, but we're going to change that. Um, Kansas State, Manhattan, Kansas, uh, late November, my junior year. I think the on field temperature was like eight, five, feel, oh, feels like five because it was raining and windy. Um, I like had that sleet coming down. And then Ames, Iowa, my freshman year. Um, gosh, that was miserable. I didn't think it could co get colder than that. Um, but I think it was also wet and rainy um, at about like a feels like temperature of maybe seven or something like that. But, you know, I know it gets colder than that. I know, I don't know what snow feels like. I actually really only seen snow a couple times in my life. So uh, it'll be pretty interesting to play in it and then be, it'd be commonplace in, in the place that you're living. Did you wear sleeves in those cold weather games or no sleeves? Oh, I'd be, that's insulting that you asked that. You know, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't think you wore sleeves, man. Uh, no, I wanted to. Actually, I, gosh, <laughs> I wanted to. But, uh, you know, it's all part of the image. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't try it uh, in Green Bay. I can tell you that you'll get some hazing coming your way if you even try it. Uh, no, I, no, no, I know better. Than that. <laughs> um, so I I don't want to make this a, a, an uncomfortable question because I don't normally do this, but. Um, with the hair, man, you've got a striking resemblance. I don't know if you've heard the name Mark Tauscher. Um, He was a, a, another former Packer right tackle, was drafted very late in the seventh round, is now in the Packer Hall of Fame. Um, you know, you look like a young Mark Tauscher. I just have to say. Um, so I'm not sure if you know who he is, but I just wanted to reassure you that the Packers do have a history of, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're drafted, where you're drafted, um, all kinds of positions. If you can play and you can be a strong contributor to the organization, you're going to get every opportunity. So we're really excited because um, when we look at the depth chart and, and who we're bringing in, we've got a lot of talent, yes, but I think, um, you know, with the experience that you have um, coming out of Texas Tech, uh, you have, you've got a really, really nice opportunity here. Uh, so you've got to feel pretty good about that, too. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm glad you reassured that my hair isn't going unnoticed. Um, but uh, <laughs> I actually just had dinner with my family, and they were almost trying to convince me to cut it. But, yeah, it's a very – first off, having long hair, especially at this length, is terrible. It's, 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 it's unbearable because it's not quite to the point where it's cool and it's way past the awkward stage. So it just looks like <laughs> been like this John Lennon, you know, hybrid situation. <laughs> but, um, like you said, you know, I'm very fortunate to be in this situation. I really do trust that, um, you know, they do provide opportunities, as you see. I mean, there's I think there's five 
four or five, maybe my numbers off the offensive line on the depth chart that went undrafted um, from previous years. So they give them the shots. Um, that's all I ask for. I'm not asking for nothing, anything else but a shot. And they're giving me that, and that's that's all I'm asking for. I'm going to take advantage of it to the best of my ability. That's all I know how to do. So um, hopefully they'll have another person with the same hairstyle one day in the Packer Hall of Fame. But right now it's making a 53 or 55 now or, or whatever I can do. <laughs> And, and you've been super generous with your time, but I, I got to ask you, um, what kind of music are you into? Uh, you know, hype up music, music in the weight room, just cruising around, you know, what what, what are you into to, uh, right now? Oh, no, you know what? I, I'm not really big into, I mean, there's time and place for hype up music, but pregame, um, I actually would listen to like Chopin and, and like classical music to try and clear my head. Um, just to, I love the, the scenes in, in movies where, there's mayhem around them, but there's like that silent serenity that that character possess possesses. I always feel like those are the most powerful moments in cinema. And, uh, you know, who doesn't want your life to be a little bit like Braveheart? So um, I try to try to stay as, as calm as possible most of the time. Um, but then again, uh, there are times where, you know, you just don't want to work out and you got to get something going. And usually it's like uh, some, some, I don't know how you would say it, not dance music, but like some club music or whatever, the, the fist pump and Jersey Shore type stuff that gets me good. So I don't know if I'm going to get made fun of because of that, but I, I would not dare lie to you. <laughs> you say cinema. Are you a movie guy then too? Or what, what, what are you into? What kind of movies? I, yeah. I would say I'm, I, I was much more of a movie guy early on in college, and then uh, priorities caught up to me. Um, but – uh, I used to be a part of the Lubbock Film Club where we'd go and watch like Russian movies or, or things like that and got to see some movies early. But again, priorities caught up to me. Uh, I love all types of movies. I, my, my girlfriend is really big into rom-coms. I'm not very big into rom-coms. Um, so I'd say it's the only genre of movie I'm not too fond of. But I love me a good thriller. I love me a psychological thriller. Anything that twists you up. Like uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, I, every college kid's going to say Pulp Fiction, but I would say Seven or Memento or something like that, where you know it gets your mind working a little bit, uh, and then just boom, punch it right in the kisser to finish it off. Yeah, what's in the box, Travis? Oh. Yeah, and I'm I'm just <laughs> picturing your off season program. You know, you're listening to Furley's, and it's like the recreation of the opening scene. In Inglorious Bastards, uh, you're just <laughs> chopping wood, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, uh, no, I, and nothing after that is reality. But uh, you know, calm before the storm, if you will. Yeah. Well, Inglorious Bastards. I hope you don't associate me with that movie after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not nope. at all, man. Uh, it's not. No, uh, that was uh, that was a deep pull. So, uh, no. any, anyway, Travis, um, we don't want to take up any more of your time. I think I've officially taken us off the rails here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, really, really do appreciate having you on. Um, would love to talk to you again sometime down the road. Uh, but if we don't have an opportunity to do that, I uh, really want to wish you the best of luck uh, heading into training camp and, and hopefully beyond. Oh, thank you so much. Been a pleasure. Um, I'd love to, you know, talk with y'all again if uh, God willing or not. But yeah, thank you so much again for your time, and uh, wishing you all the best. Yep, and we Thanks, always Travis. like to close it with a go pack go. So if you want to give us a go pack go, we'll uh, close it off on that. Well, go pack go then. <laughs> go pack go. Go pack go. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, Travis. Thank you all again. Take care. It counts in horseshoes and hand grenades There ain't no second place in a land